Hey guys, it's Zombie Rush. Battleofglory.com lets you earn real life money with their World of Tanks tournaments. If you'd like the chance to earn prizes upwards of 250 euros by playing World of Tanks, sign up with the referral link down in the description. Alrighty, so for today's video, we're going to be talking about brawling mediums and how they play in real life examples. So, I, I'm sure everyone's aware of this, but a lot of people would characterize Russian mediums as brawling mediums, and I want to demonstrate something that I think is really relevant, uh, and that is that you can't brawl in mediums. Like, th the way you would brawl in a Leopard 1 is very similar to the way you would brawl in a 121, you know? They're both extremes according to the, you know, stereotypes that the tank have, but I play them very similarly, and... You know, that's how I was able to 3-mark the Leopard or, you know, whatever. I don't have a 1-2-1, one, one, but I've played it. So, um, I want to try to suggest, or maybe, like, I'll propose this idea that what you want to do in any tank is going to be to take an important position and then use it. So, what you can see me doing is I'm on Swamp. I've What I do typically on Swamp is I try to win the castle area because what happens on this map, you can see the castle has shots pretty much all along into the cap circles. So, I mean, it controls areas that control the cap circles. So this is the side of the map that you want if you want to allow your teammates to reset, because what happens is if the enemies get up to here, they'll then kill the tanks up here, and then those tanks can't, re can't reset. So this is a winning position on this map from the southern side at the very least. Uh, so I've decided I'm going to use, you know, my tank to win this, even though this is stereotypically the heavy flank. So what you can see me doing is I'm pushing up to here. Now, before I started this game, I took a look at the enemy team lineup. I said, okay, they have a 50B, they have a Leopard. Those are two quick tanks. I might expect to beat them. Uh, and then as I drove up, I noticed the Leopard wasn't here. You can see he's in the north. And then I was like, okay, well, where's the 50B? And you can see the 50B is right here. So these are things you want to mentally prepare for when you drive into position because if you're not ready for for a 50b to be in front of you and he is it's going to be very hard to come up with some sort of solution on the spot so i was actually trying to get him lit someone else did and he lost all his hp that made it relatively easy for me to deal with and from here we now control this game winning position and you're going to see how i use it to try to impact you know the rest of my game so i got lucky the 50b bounced one off of me that would probably have penned in a leopard one so you know, you, you can consider that as an advantage, but I didn't do that on purpose. I did not rely on the Object 430's superior medium tank armor to bounce the uh, 50B on purpose. Uh, when you're playing, in quotations, brawling mediums, a lot of the armor is going to be based on luck. Uh, you just increase your chances of bouncing a shell. There's no guarantee about it, unless you're, like, dealing with a stock tier 8, you know? Um, that's just my opinion. So, what you can see me doing here, despite being in a brawling medium, I'm going to be very passive for the next minute or so. And that's because I can. I have a lot of information that I want to take advantage of. So, they've got a tortoise. I'll pause it here and demonstrate what I'm... Oh, I'll keep playing because I camp here for a good long time. But they've got a tortoise, a T-34, a WZ-11114, an E-75, a T-34, and an IS-3. These are all the tanks that imp or have the potential to impact my position. So, you're going to... What a lot of people would do, and what I would suggest that you don't do in this type of position, is push up around this corner. Because what happens as you push up, you expose yourself, in this case I'd be exposing myself to about five tanks. The WZ, the E-75, the T-34, and then the Tortoise and the T-34, who are also at D-4. So I can't push up, especially considering that this IS-3 is right there, uh, and he's very likely to spot me before I even get around this H2 corner. So for me, if I were to try to push into G1, which is something a lot of people like to do when they don't see anything on the side of the map, uh, would just be suicidal. So even though I'm in this brawling medium, which has the stereotype of having good armor, I'm going to be playing it as if I had a, a Leopard 1, because my armor isn't reliable enough for me to go in front of a T-34, Tortoise, E-75, etc., and actually expect it to work. So right here, uh, you can see I hit the castle. I'm great at driving. I was watching the map, and I can see that they're pushing down the 9 line. Now, I don't see a possible way for me to reliably impact that fight. I've tried going down to K7 before, uh, to deal with that kind of thing, and it's never worked. So I decide not to do it. I'm going to try something different, uh, and I see that this IS-3 and ST-1 have basically got themselves into really terrible positions. Now, from here, I'm going to make a mistake, and I want to point it out. What you're going to see me do is I'm going to drive up, and at this point in time, I'm expecting the ST-1, the IS-3, or the T-34 to push into the WZ. I expect them to die, and I expect uh, them to maybe 
light the T-34 or the tortoise at the same time. So I'm expecting potential lights on the tortoise and the T-34, and eventually I'm going to decide that I don't want, like, I'm going to come up with a solution. I'm going to try to keep my T-32, who's going to yellow the W's out alive, and I'm going to start blind firing this bush. Now we can just sort of fast forward this because what you're going to see me do here is the mistake that I wanted to talk about. So what I did is I had my tank pointing away <laughs> and that was perfect. But what you can see me do is I point my tank the opposite direction of where I'll want to go if I get lit and then I start shooting. So this is a really stupid mistake. You want to point your tank towards cover. Like you want to point your tank towards cover. That way if you get lit in some sort of situation like this, you can very easily, you know, get safe instead of having to rotate your whole tank 180 degrees. So right here I'm blind firing and that's because I noticed the T32 starting to push up. I want to put shots into the T34 who is in these bushes. Ideally I can just sort of get them to fall back. You know that might buy my T32 some time. You can see the tortoise has managed to stealthily leave D4 and he's pushing into uh, the valley area. And this J2 position is just going to become more and more valuable as the game progresses. Now, I saw that the T30, like, I know that these guys are going to be looking at my WZ, um, excuse me. I saw these guys here, and I knew that they were going to be shooting at the IS-3 and the ST-1. So what I did is I got myself lit on purpose, trying to distract these guys and try to buy my teammates some more time. I wasn't going to throw away my hit points for people who were, you know, in terrible positions and probably going to die, but I tried to help them a bit. Uh... Uh, and I don't really know how much it helps them, but you can see the ST1 dies, the IS-3 is going to be next, and then the third IS-3 looks like he wants to follow suit. So what I'm doing from here is the UDES is spotted. Now, at this point in time, I know the 430 is pushing in, we're losing map control very, very quickly. Now, very, uh, I'm going to think about this, and I'm going to be a bit late to the play here, but I'm expecting this E75 and the T34 to start pushing up. So what you're going to notice is that I sort of realize I have shots in the T34, take a couple, and then I'm going to move because I'm expecting that E75 to start pushing into J2, and I want to catch him as he's doing it to try to give my teammates over here shots at him so I want I want them to shoot the 75 as he drives through here so I'm going to expect that I look for shots on the tortoise and the WZ I'm late and then I sort of realize oh shit he's probably driving up right now and you're going to notice that because my medium you know isn't a leopard I'm a bit late to the party but we're going to be able to spot the E75 as he comes up he's going to lose some HP to the Yag Tiger who's behind him and that's going to make it a lot more easy for me to deal with this type of game because my goal here is to not lose HP, right? Even though I'm in a brawling medium, this E75 is going to be able to pen me without a problem. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to track him right here and I was just a bit late. He was able to put a shot into me uh, and that costs me 484 hit points. My armor isn't reliable enough to deal with an E75's gun. So you can see I tried to, you know, deal with that. I noticed that the T34 is in front of me. The WZ is dealing like uh, he's taking the Yag Tiger's attention. So my focus is going to be on the WZ, free up that Yag Tiger. Now hopefully the Yag Tiger can help me with the T-34. And right now we're in the situation where we're down three tanks and uh, they have a 430 with a top gun. He's having a spectacular game. And I notice the Centurion Axe in X is rushing the 430. So right here I make a mistake in judgment. The reason I'm doing this is because I suspect that the Centurion Action X wasn't a good player at all and I see him rush this 430 that sort of confirms my suspicions he was blocking my shots uh and it turns out he has a way better game than what I had but at the end I think me helping out worked so I came here for the wrong reasons I suspected that the Centurion Action X was bad he wasn't uh but in the end it worked out because he's left on 10 HP after that engagement so right here the tables have sort of turned they've only got three four tier eights left We've got a 1000 HP tier 10, 10, 10 HP Centurion Action X, and a Yag Tiger. So the situation isn't perfect. They've got the clicker, right? And they have a Udez, and they also have a sniping T34. So it's sort of difficult for us to deal with this, but it's very, very winnable. We just sort of have to make sure we don't throw. The Centurion Action X, just him living, is a huge asset to us because if he just plays the ridge where he is and I push up, which I'm going to do, he should have shots on like the T-34 or something, like anyone who goes to put shots on me, uh, he will have shots on. So I'm making this play, expecting that the Yag Tiger and the AX will have shots, 
you can see the AX is moving, uh, but really the Yag Tiger has shot. So in my mind, this play is okay. It should work out. But you can see the Udez ended up spotting me, uh, and in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm going to get clicked right here. So I'm going to push up. I know the Udez is going to be in these bushes, and I'm, I'm not going to spot him until he shoots. So uh, when I get lit, I'm like, okay, we're definitely going to get clicked any second now. So I start moving, um, you know. I'm holding W, I'm going as quickly as I can. Luckily, the RD doesn't land a shot on my engine deck. I do get stunned for uh, a lot. I only get hit for 376 by the guy that I can't, you know, fight against, but, you know, it is what it is. So, right here, I know he's shot, and I've already paid the price for his shot, so I want to rush the situation because I don't want the M40, M43 to reload again. Really, I'm a two-shot for him. So, in my mind, I'm thinking I have to go really, really quickly. So, I can see the M40's running away. I don't want him to position himself to get another shot. I'm just rushing straight into the Udez. I want to kill this guy before the M40 reloads. And I'm going to point out something that I do right here. So, we can back it up. I'll re-look at this situation because a lot of people have trouble with the actual brawling part when it comes to, media, uh, you know, TDs. But I'm just going to talk about why I went to the right as opposed to the left. Right here, the Tiger 2 is going to die. We're going to finish him off. And I'm dealing with this Udez. Like I said, I want to get this done before the RD reloads. And I'm pushing straight into him. I know I'm going to take a hit. Uh, but what's going to happen here is I would suggest you do this with every single TD in the game. You want to go to the side that they won't think you'll go to. So in this situation, the Udez is likely to think, you know, I see this gap here. I would never have expected the person to take this gap if I was in his position. So what I do is I cut to the right. Now you can see I'm watching this in slow motion, like, because I'm in the moment, and I can see he's starting to prepare to go to the, the left or right. I have my finger on the space bar in case I need to make a handbrake turn, but he moves his tank to the left. You can see he's totally expecting me to go to this side. As a result, instead of having to suddenly change my direction or whatever, I just go on this side. So you can see I come up to here. That's going to give me the advantage. I don't risk losing much HP now that I'm in this position and I'm able to just finish him off. Now from here, I'm going to get clicked, but pretty much this game is over. As long as we don't throw, we should be okay. So the already hits me for 366. Now you can see I'm sort of tilt. Just going to fast forward it. Um, and like I said, not throwing is the challenge in a lot of these situations. So you can see bounce heat off the M40, M43's rear. And I think the Centurion Action X <laughs> somehow crashes. So that's, that's what I meant on the non-throwing part. Uh, he did an amazing job though. Like I'm just making fun of him because he crashed, but, uh, you know, that's, that's the game. 4.9 K damage was my result. I didn't hit a blind shot. Uh, on this guy early on, but let's go take a look at the end plates and we'll talk about the map tactic afterwards. Okay, so this was a victory. Obviously, we won the game 85k credits, 1600 XP mastery badge first class. In the end, I did 4966 damage. The AX beat me, the same guy who killed him, so no, but he did an amazing job. Without these three players, I don't think it would have been possible for us to win. Now, on the other hand, the enemy 430 also didn't, like, that's a huge game. For, like, for most people, that's a huge game for a tier 10 tank, but Unworthy Opponent definitely carried his team. Without him, it wouldn't have been this close either. So, you know, huge congrats to him for having such an epic game. And uh, yeah, so here are my results. Lost 26k credits. I think a lot of this came from the way that I spent 66,000 on ammo. Obviously, I ended up running out of APCR by the end of the game. So that's pretty much it. Let's go take a look at the map tactic. And I'll just try to explain, you know, why I basically did 5k damage from one position, more or less. Okay, so the way Swamp works, or at least what I found from the southern spawn, is that J2, like the castle, is very, very important for winning the game, and I'll explain why. So what I have found is that you have to control this because this position controls this position, which in turn allows players to reset. Because what happens is if the enemy is controlling the castle, they have cover, and they can just shoot anyone who's here. And then when they've also pushed down the nine line, which happens a lot in pub games, uh, it's very difficult for people to be boxed in this area and you know be successful. So in my experience, this position allows you to control this position, which sort of lets these guys work on the reset. And that's typically how this game plays out. So this is really strong. Now, the way you go about playing this and often if you can win this, this the castle, you can get 5k damage games, is by going up to where I was because what that does is it allows me to shoot at any heavies who try to drive up here and effectively they're in a crossfire you know they've got the TDs here who are camping and have shots in them and then they've got me here who sort of uh 
acts as a physical barrier, you know, preventing them to actually get into the castle safely. So it's it's a perfect play from the southern perspective. There's nothing they can do when they go here. If you're on the north, the best thing to do is just not play the this area because it's suicide. If there's a medium here, uh, even if there isn't a medium here, these guys just farm the hell out of you. So I would suggest you not do that. Now, what I did was very situational, right? I got to this position, it's a good position, and I rode the game out, and the majority of my damage was done from this position. So obviously, uh, despite being in an armored medium, you'll notice the trades I took were relatively low risk. I made sure I was hauled down when I was dealing with the people who often go to these houses over here, uh, or I tried to have some other advantage because you cannot reliably expect any sort of medium tank's armor to work. Especially, you know, someone might have heat loaded for a mouse and then look at you and then, you know, even if you're an E50M and you're angled, their heat might pen your upper front plate. So that's just my experience. Um, and that's pretty much the game. I think it was very self-explanatory, but the short and sweet of it is I went to J2 and I played J2 and I mean, that's pretty much it. When you're pushing in, actually we should talk about this because when you're pushing in down like so, you can do this, you just need to make sure it's safe because this obviously exposes you to the campers back here. So you need to make sure you're not gonna get lit immediately as you do this or that they just don't have TDs here because these guys will hit you for 750 as you drive down. So you need to make sure you have some way of dealing with these guys so they don't shoot at you. And then you can just sort of play these. Uh, there's like a mound here that you can use for cover as you shoot people. And then you sort of push up like so. Uh, you can also cross like I did and get underneath if you if it, if that situation calls for it. But really, if you want to push in from the 1-2 line, make sure there's only like five tanks left and there's no one here or there's no one in this area that will spot you so that you know these TDs won't have shots in you. So that's just the way I approach this map. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you want to be, uh, if you want to see more, be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button and I hope to see you around. Later guys, bye-bye.